This is experiment number four, current and voltage. Uh, this is the circuit diagram. We're going to be measuring the current at points A, B, C, and D for part A. Be quiet or you'll be in the office. Thank you. Uh, in part B, we're measuring the voltage across points A, B, C, D, E, and F. So that is the circuit diagram which you'll want to copy down in your lab report. Um, and you'll, before we proceed, you'll want to fill out your hypothesis, okay, which is just above this here. Okay, I think the current will be highest at point. A, B, C, or D is what you want to put in there. And I think the voltage across point blank will be the highest for the circuit in part B. There you would put in either A, B, C, D, E, or F. Okay, now we've actually already gone on to the first part of part A. And this, if you'll notice here, I've got my light bulb glowing. Okay, I've connected my ammeter at point A in the circuit, which is right after the power supply, coming out the negative end of the power supply. Okay, and if you look on my ammeter, it reads 0 0.32 amps. Okay, and that is the same as 320 amps. So if I go to the next page, or sorry, 320 milliamps, I mean, okay? So on the next page, I've entered in there 320 milliamps into the data table, okay? So that's the first part of this. I am now going to uh, stop the video while I set up the next part for part B. Okay, we are now at point B, measuring the current at point B in the circuit, okay? So point B in the circuit is right after the switch. Uh, so if we take a look at my ammeter reading it is 0 0.32 amps okay or 320 uh 320 milliamps again okay so i'm going to stop pause the video again and we'll go and connect the ammeter at point c next okay here we are of the uh, ammeter set up at point c which is after the light bulb in the circuit and you'll notice my ammeter reads 0 0.32 amps once again or 320 milliamps okay now we're going to move and make our our last measurement of point d so i'm going to pause the video while i do that okay here we are now at point d measuring the current right before uh the current goes back into the power supply at the positive end okay and we take a look at our ammeter again it reads 0 0.32 amps or 320 milliamps okay so that indicates to us then that the current has been the same all the way through it hasn't changed okay so i'm now going to pause the video while we get ready to set up for part b okay just to summarize for part a of the experiment it doesn't matter where i measure the current whether at point a which is right after the power supply at point b which is uh right after the switch, point C, which is right after the light bulb, or point D before it goes back into the power supply. The current is the same at any point that I measure throughout the loop of the circuit. Current doesn't change. Okay, now we're going to move on to part B, which is to measure voltage measurements at different locations. Okay, so now we're on part B. We're measuring the voltage at different points across the circuit. Okay. Uh, so the first one we're going to measure is across the power supply. So I'm going to measure that and Taylor will video the reading on the, so yeah, just video me where I'm connecting it across the power supply and then on the, on the meter. Yeah. Do you have the meter? Mm -hmm. So we need to see the reading. Okay, good. Okay. So we have a reading of 23.3 roughly volts. Okay. Across the power supply. Okay. Next I'm going to measure the voltage across the switch. So again, show me measuring across the switch. Yeah. You got it? Yeah. Okay. So across the switch, I'm not getting any reading on the meter, so show the meter too. Okay. It reads zero. Zero, zero, point zero. Okay. So no voltage there. Okay. Next, I'm going to measure the voltage across the first light bulb, so that's point C. So point C. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry, that's backwards. So we hook it the other way around. Okay, so that's reading 11.7 or 6. 11.7. We'll go with 11.7 volts across the bulb. Okay, you got it? Yep. 
Okay, and do you have the meter too? You're showing the meter? Mm -hmm. Okay. Next, I'm going to measure across the second light bulb. Okay, so across the second light bulb. Oh, backwards. Hold on. Across the second light bulb, I'm getting a reading of 11.3 volts. Okay, 11.3. Okay, finally, I'm going to measure across both bulbs together. Okay, both bulbs together. Oh, sorry, wrong way. There we go. Both bulbs together. I'm getting a reading of, yikes, hold on, 23.1 roughly. Okay. Close your eyes. 23.1. Oh, 23.2. 23.2 volts. Okay. And then finally, the last place I measure is before it goes back into the power supply at point F across the conducting wire. So that's going to be from here, I believe, to here. Okay, and there I'm getting a reading of 0 0.1 volts. 0 0.1. Okay, and that's it. Okay. Okay, so the things to take note of here is the voltage across the power supply, 23.3 volts. Okay. That's almost the same as the voltage across the two light bulbs together, okay? 23.2 volts, which is point E, okay? So in other words, the voltage across your power supply, okay, the voltage provided, in other words, is the same as the voltage that is dropped across your load, which is the two bulbs, okay? So that's important to note. Also, if we take the individual voltages across the bulbs, 11.7 plus 11.3, okay? That equals 23 volts, which is, again, approximately the same as the voltage when we, of the two together, right? So the two bulbs separately added together give you the total voltage drop across both bulbs and across the power supply, okay? So that's important to note. Also, the voltage drop across the switch is zero, okay, because there's hardly any resistance in a switch. And the voltage drop across the wire going back into the power supply, 0 0.1 volts because again there's hardly any drop through a wire okay so uh, now you should be able to answer your questions and write your conclusion and sources of error thank you